All right, hey guys, we're here today at Associated Metalcast LLC. Bit of a Cinderella story with automation in a company that has seen incredible growth over the last 10 years. They went from hesitancy in automation to multiple automated machining cells from plug and play to customize and have increased their headcount from 13 to 130 employees. So I'm here with Brian, representative from Associated Metalcast. And uh, Brian, would you like to kind of explain some of your initial hesitancies to automate? Um, our hesitancy with automation is probably the same, same story as most everyone has. Um, hesitancy of this new technology, uh, bring it on uh, any kind of new technology that you feel like is going to be difficult. Uh, when you look at, a, at an automated cell, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty intimidating. Um, the worry of the automated cells shutting down your production, uh, keeping production day to day, the spindle turning is, is, is how we we feed our families, you know, everyone does. Uh, and the hesitancy of, of integrating those systems together and keeping them flowing and keeping the product moving. Um, that was our, our main goal and I fought it, you know, tooth and nail. And not knowing the quantities that we run, um, being hesitant, I, I, my mindset was you needed 100,000 parts, you know, tens of thousands of parts, quantities per year to justify automation. And that's just not the case anymore, especially especially with these these units like the load and go uh, that you see behind us. You know, and like I said, I was hesitant with, with automation, with with especially robotics, uh, just trying to make it fit. Didn't feel like it would fit fit what we do on the daily. <clears throat> but I was introduced to this unit at IMTS show, and it fit. It, it, you know, the the simplicity of the control, the the way that that already explained the the integration. Um, it kind of finally clicked that this may be something that, that we may want to, to pursue. Uh, we added this cell, Gostra came in and, and automated, and it has been a breath of fresh air. Really opened our eyes to automation. Uh, we immediately seen a 30% increase you know, in production. Um, and what I want everyone to understand there, I, I would pit our operators here at Associated Metalcast against anybody in the world. I, I really would. We have a hard working group of people. Uh, it's not a, a slap in the face to those guys to say that we had a 30% increase. What you get is you get lost motion. They don't have to go to the restaurant. They work through breaks. We get some unattended runtime with some of our sales here. Um, and it's not replacing people. That's one thing. And, you know, another hesitancy that I think you'll probably find through the in industry is, is the hesitation. Someone thinks you had a, a, a robotic sale that you're going to replace somebody. You're not. You're going to repurpose somebody. They're actually going to be able to grow and learn into some new technology. Um, we have people here that, that can program Fanic robots now that, that would not have been an option before. Um, and they take that technology with them. You get, you, I think you actually gain um, some notoriety there, especially with the young group. You, you, you gain some interest there out of the younger individuals that's getting into manufacturing uh, because of robotics. You know, they walk through and see a robot uh, and have the opportunity to, to either run that robot or especially program, set up, uh, learn everything they can learn about that robot. It's something new. It is a new technology. It's been pretty much a flawless uh, integration in our first step into automation. Took from there and have added several other automated units, units uh, kind of more specialized to some of the product that we run. But as a mainstay, um, this unit especially, from the, from the control side of it, you answer six or seven questions and you're running apart from one inch diameter up to five inch, five and a half inch round diameter or, or square diameter, even square diameter, just with, with seven menu clicks and you're running. Um, it's been a breath of fresh air, really. Nice. Yeah, you brought up a lot of good points there, Brian. And something that stuck with me um, throughout all the amazing things that you said was your, some of your hesitancy was batch sizes, right? Sure. Like, oh, we don't know if we sure. have, you know, we got that that medium volume, kind of higher variety stuff, but, sure. but that's what this is made to handle, right? Absolutely. And that's Absolutely. probably part of what you saw at IMTS in 2014. It is, it is. And like I said, the ease of setup. You know, you're thinking that I'm gonna to have to add or, or set up another, basically another machine tool, and, and on the front end of it, you think it's so much more involved than it is. It's really not, it's really not. The teeth points that the robot already has programmed into it, it finds the, the material from the drawer itself. There's things that, that you, you had a chance to put your hands on this unit. If everyone in manufacturing had a chance to put their hands on this unit, 
I have no doubt that just about every shop around could implement it into what they do daily. Yeah, it's perfect for getting your feet wet. Absolutely. Yeah, and changeover can be easier, right? You answer oh, those absolutely. couple of questions, you, you adjust do. the grippers, real fast changeover. You do. And I know from one of our conversations earlier, one of your favorite points about it is that it really is two independent systems. Absolutely. Yep. And yeah. the robot going down isn't stopping your machine. Absolutely. We can, we can send the robot to the home position and run the machine daily. And we have an operator still stand here. And Gosture does a great idea, uh, does a great job of, of integrating this system where you can do that, leaving your room. Uh, you're not blocked off. The light curtain only only controls the the robotic cell. If the robot go, if the robot goes down, if you have an error, if it can't find material, if it goes to an alarm state, it don't stop your machine. Your machine is still running. You're still turning turning. Spindles. Yeah, you're still making chips. <laughs> Absolutely. And on the other side, if the machine tool goes down for any reason, you have an alarm there. The robot's still doing its thing, waiting to get in position. They both work independently. Gostra has done a really good job of integrating that uh, into this unit. The one thing I could see being a really big advantage for you know those those job shops with some medium volume that maybe need to do a one-off, you could pause the robot and still use the LB3000 as an LB3000. Absolutely, absolutely, you can. That's, uh, and we've done that. We've done things that didn't really make sense to automate a couple of prototype parts here, uh, here, or there, or when you're actually setting up, you just send the robot home like it don't exist, and go ahead and continue on with a, with a standard lay setup just like you would any other time. When you get ready to implement the robot, cut the robot on. Got the, the uh, system link on on the machine, you're ready to go. As we've been talking about this cell and some of your hesitancies towards jumping into automation, how important was that service and support aspect to you and your company? Uh, service and support was a huge thing here. Um, it is with anyone. Uh, you buy a machine tool, you buy automated system, you buy anything, you need help. You're going to need support at some point in time or another. Machine goes down, even if it's just a, a training thing. Uh, one thing I will say about Gosker and Moore South, Moore South's been a, a great partner of ours for years. Um, they've always been uh, Johnny on the spot. They're here as soon as, we, as soon as they can get here, and they're open. Their communication, they've built a lot of relationships with those guys through the years. Um, I can't say enough good things about Gosker. Uh, they kept from from every single person, from Jack when he came in and installed this robot, to Aaron when he came in, installed and programmed our other other automated cells. Uh, the relationship that we built with Ari, all those guys have been. Awesome. Uh, I, ha I actually have every robotic programmer that's ever worked on our system. I have their cell phone number, and I, I can reach out, contact them 24/7. There've been times on a Sunday evening at, at, at seven o'clock that I'm in here working on something, running into a problem. That Aaron has been responsive. He'll link into our system. We have have the network, have it run through the network. He can link into our system, diagnose our problem, uh, and help us help us over the phone. There've been times where we've had uh, issues in the past where we needed to get them down here. Um, that, that they would get in the car and drive here. You know, we had a problem on the Saturday, Monday, Aaron's sitting in our shop. Um, I can't say enough good things about, about Morris especially. I mean, about Morris and Gosker, the relationship that we have with those two guys, uh, I, would, I, would, I would put that against anyone in the world. Yeah, it's incredible. Uh, we're, we're a relationship business. So. Absolutely, the responsiveness, um, the, their, their willingness to help. I mean, they're... They're a customer-driven company, both of them, you can tell that, uh, from the very first dealing with the salesman all the way down through the service, even the guys that have came in here and installed the fencing, uh, the, the technicians, um, every one of them have been, have been great, have been uh, uh, more than happy to help.